You got one? Coming! Woo! Well, we finally found one. Oh, like the last hour of the last day. Hey everybody, so this is the Hellbender exhibit here at the North Carolina Zoo. It's where this whole story starts. So somehow I've never seen a hellbender in the wild or in an aquarium. Every time I go, they're hidden, but that's why we're starting right here at the Streamside exhibit. Hellbenders are one of the world's largest salamanders and have been on my bucket list for a long time. They've actually got three in this tank, but they're really hard to find because they live well, underneath rocks. <laughs> so I called Dustin, head curator of reptiles and amphibians, to help. I was going to call one of the keepers over here to see if he wouldn't mind feeding them for us to see if we can, uh, if we can have one of them come out. With a GoPro mounted on his head, David went behind the scenes and into the Hellbender exhibit in hopes of luring this giant salamander out of hiding. Turns out, Dustin and the zoo are doing a lot of work with these salamanders here in an effort to teach people about their habits and their struggles in the wild. This exhibit is fantastic because it simulates its ideal habitat, a well-oxygenated, fast-moving, cold stream. Now, if only we can tempt this massive two-foot salamander from its hiding place with this tasty fish. Okay, you can actually see him sticking his head out of the rock. Check this out. These giants can live for 50 years and normally feed on fish and crayfish in the streams. And they're completely harmless, yet as some of their common names indicate, people used to think they were a more dubious inhabitant of the streams. Of course, this exhibit is just the beginning of the story. Really, it's all about trying to introduce them back into the wild, help the wild populations. That's why we're going to the mountains. So off I went to hopefully get a glimpse of one in the wild mountains of North Carolina. If nothing else, my goal was to follow the zoo team and their efforts to help the wild populations. Woohoo! It's raining! He wants You're to get, get over there. Anyway. Well, I <laughs> guess, right? I don't know how we're gonna find salamanders. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the stuff? Yep, that's the, that's the boxes. These boxes are a big part of trying to rehab the wild populations. The goal is to put these boxes in the stream and then monitor them to see if this helps increase their numbers. But the water will flow around it and it will not cause siltation to enter the box. So this would be facing downstream, hellbenders would be coming in the box that way, and they would also be, they would also be protecting the box with their heads sticking out from that end. But first, they have to actually get them in the river, and that's harder than it looks. These are the hellbender boxes that all have to go out in the river, but right now it is not ideal. The river is really high and super muddy, so we'll see what happens. Oh boy. Unfortunately, the rain made the roads so slippery that we almost lost the entire truck into the river. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. The silver lining though, we got to share a little bit about what we were doing with the local tow truck driver that we called to get us out. We're putting the boxes in, which is going to help them with, uh, provide them with more breeding habitat to help save them. Yeah. Um, but it's been a tricky effort lately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we didn't want to leave without getting our feet wet. I want to attempt at least getting our data collection here today. So we suited up and I grabbed my kayak to help get across the river. One of our goals was to find the boxes they put in last time, but that probably wasn't going to happen today, given that the only way across this rushing river was with my heavy-duty whitewater kayak. Not the greatest luck today. However, we did use the kayak to get the measurements of the stream width, something that I will say must have been much easier at lower flows. Dustin and his team then got readings of the flow rate and water quality measurements. All of this is good scientific data, even if the chances of seeing a wild hellbender today were next to none. Look how murky the water is. It's like six inch visibility. And this points to one of the biggest problems facing the hellbenders. And as soon as that silt becomes um, a kind of a filler into these homes and it fills the gaps, then the hellbenders can't use them anymore. It was a bummer to see this water so murky. And if we were gonna find one, we'd have to come back when the water was much clearer. This is how these streams are supposed to look, clear and cold. We shot lots of video in this freshwater stream and there were tons of fish, but still no hellbender. In fact, as our luck would have it, it started raining again. It's always <laughs> raining. Our last chance. And we were about to give up when Jonas found one. You got one? 
coming. And I discovered quickly how camouflage and cryptic they are. Even when we found one and I was looking right at it, I didn't even realize what I was looking at. Well, I mean, it's cool. Yeah. It's the tail. No, it's not. <laughs> Is the whole thing yeah. the, where, where he's, he's sticking going, out? That's where it's headed. Yeah. It's oh, sitting up right. there. Yeah. Dustin then carefully brought it back to get some measurements. Oh, he's got it. Holy moly. This was a big one, an adult. You know, this is probably about, I would say this is a good size adult. You can see just by the tail. The tail has got great color. Yeah. No. That's amazing. Dustin measured it in the tube. Then he weighed it. Then scanned for any tags. Then very carefully put her back in the stream. It was so exciting to finally see one in the wild, a rare gem in our mountain streams. So to wrap it up, if you want to help these salamanders, here's the keys. First, never flip or stack any rocks in the stream. After all, that is their home. Then, if you do see one, observe it from a distance and consider yourself very lucky. And maybe more important than anything, encourage others to have good land management practices near the streams. Because dirty streams are bad for hellbenders. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll leave links to everything that the zoo's doing. And we'll see you next video. To help us by protecting streams like this one right here, right behind us. You know, we've got this beautiful stream where hellbenders could occupy, uh, but we need to keep them pristine. It's I'm not going to lie, this is super fun. Are you having a good fun. time? I am. <laughs> I'm into photography, so I'm the one that's usually taking the photos of people's faces, and, and I see how they feel now. <laughs> <laughs>